If you were forced to take part in terrifying mind games against 17-year-old kids who act like they're 35, what would you do? You've just been accepted into the most elite school in Japan and will be forced to compete against nice-looking kids who are secretly crazy and not-so-nice-looking kids who are still just as crazy but less secret about it. In order to graduate this school and make it to the top, I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the Japanese schoolgirls and classroom of the elite. These kids will go through horrifying psychological war fair games while struggling to get through the one thing no one prepared them for. High school. Kyo here is your not-so-average kid hiding a dark secret. He never smiles. And some other stuff. All new kids arrive for their first day at this top-ranked school in the country, not realizing the most obvious problem of all. It's government-funded, which automatically makes it evil. Kyo awkwardly introduces himself to his class of 1D, getting slow claps in response, just as their homeroom everyone. teacher comes in. We'll call her Miss Smoke Show. Miss Smoke Show hands out the rules of the school and tells them this place is basically a mini city designed to keep them here forever and they won't be able to leave the school area without permission until they graduate. While here, they will be judged on their performance. They can buy whatever they want using their school points loaded onto their ID card and points will be reloaded at the end of each month. Each point here is equal to 1 yen but since they were just accepted here, 100,000 yen has just been deposited into each student's account reflecting their worth in this school. Shocking everyone, Kyotaka wonders how this government-funded school can pay them that much and thinks something else is going on because since when was the last time you could trust any government? I got a hot date one week with this girl named Mizuhara, but I'm freaking out about my looks because I'm turning into Saitama. But there's one thing that'll give me the true confidence to meet my one true love. And that's with the help of Keeps. Keeps is an online subscription that makes it easier and cheaper for men to treat their male pattern baldness right from home. And with exactly 168 hours till I meet my future wife, maybe, me and others out there desperate for expert hair loss care will be able to rely on Keeps' licensed medical providers without trips to the doctor or pharmacy. And with personalized affordable treatment plans right to your door compared to expensive traditional pharmacies, this means that I'll be able to spend that saved money on my dinner with Bay. I'm thinking of the two-for-one special on oysters. But there's one thing I like more than two-for-one deals, and that's a two-for-one gel that combines both treatments for the hassle-free weeb out there, as well as both FDA-approved hair loss treatment options, which you can choose from. And you can message your medical provider or Keeps Care team 24-7 about all this, included in all their subscription plans, so we can start a hassle-free journey to a more confident life with affordable, cutting-edge science-backed solutions helping you and me prevent and or stimulate more hair growth all day long even on my date, so we can look our best in rapid time. Actually, with this much money saved for the date and so much newfound confidence, I could just screw the date and go on a date with myself. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta cancel the date. I know it's terrible. Hair loss stops at Keeps. For a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash how to beat anime or click the link in the description. That's keeps.com slash how to beat anime. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring the video. Now back to the show. He runs into this girl who sits next to him in his class and thinks they should get to know each other as friends. She reluctantly introduces herself as Suzuna. All the kids in the store are buying the most expensive items like shampoos with ingredients that I can't read. But then he notices that she's buying the off-brand stuff like a peasant and he clocks this section in the store, offering free products anyone can take, making his gut tell him something else is going on here. Over the next month, him and Suzune start hanging out more and meet each other, and meet another person named Kikyo Kushida, who acts like that one friend you meet once and kinda just never goes away, and she becomes a part of the group. The gang starts noticing more signs that things aren't as they seem, like students messing around in class, not paying attention, and the teachers don't seem to care. But one day, all the students realize that they've stopped receiving their monthly points. They complain to Miss Smoke Show, and she reveals what's really going on. She calls all the students idiots and announces that they failed their first unofficial test. The school has been keeping tabs on the number of times they've been acting like bad students, late to class, haven't done homework, etc. She reminds them that their class performance is reflected in their monthly points, and because they slacked off, they're now getting zero points this month, calling all the students useless trash. They now panic and discuss how they will survive without bailing out. These kids have gotten themselves into this mess, but young or old, there's no way I wouldn't buy something sick, like an anime body pillow that I could cuddle up to, so I can't really judge them that hard. But taking free cash from someone usually means that something is always going to go wrong eventually, and there's always going to be a price. This should have been obvious, they should have been more suspicious of the whole thing, especially because we are in Japan. Us being athletes of the mind, and this school being the top ranked in the country means I would have looked at this stack of free cash similar to how standard NBA contracts for players just starting out look like. Contracts for rookies just starting out are dangerously less secure compared to standard players, and come with far more terms and conditions. Because just like the NBA rookies, these kids may have the skills, but they are not safe bets yet, since the school is pouring away resources into training them, which means it should
should have been obvious that any free cash they received wasn't really free. It was likely dependent on their academic performance, especially since performance-based bonuses in jobs are a thing. The free cash was also suspicious if we realize that Japan is viewed as a collective society, where citizens are encouraged to think less of themselves and more of the big picture. Knowing these obvious factors, I would have simply asked the teacher questions about the free cash the moment we got it, and if she didn't answer us, then that still would have told us everything we needed to know. My final move at this point would be to rush off to the supermarket to steal all of their free items, and basically get a monopoly on all of this, since this situation is about to go to shit really quick, and turn into an underage black market, and mama gotta get in on that action. The next day, Suzuna meets up with Kyotaka to figure out a new game plan, and will soon be forced to fight against the school itself in order to graduate. Talking to their teacher, she's figured out that each student's performance are point-based, and all classes are actually competing with each other. Each semester, each class is given 1,000 points, which means class 1D has already lost points, and are now officially in last place. On the verge of being expelled, but they realize their one shot at staying here will be by passing the upcoming midterm exam. And just then, their class representative, Yosuke, but we're gonna call him Swamp Hair Guy, he's going to try to bring their class together to form a group study session to prepare for the upcoming exam. But this redhead wannabe doesn't cooperate and storms out. Everyone must have watched Garzi's wing, because they are now blind and don't notice their student council president, who creepily stares at Suzuna from this window. Surprised her dumb, smart-looking ass made it to class 1D. And he chats with the leader, Arisu, and her second-in-command, Kohei, this bald guy of this year's top class, the one standing in class 1D's way. A little later, Suzune invites Kiyotaka to lunch, updating him that they now have a huge problem. Their classmate, redhead guy, and his two friends are now refusing to join Swamp Hair Guy's study group. Since their class cannot afford to get minus points for this exam, Suzune says they must either gain or at least not lose any more points than they have. She ropes Kiyotaka into helping her convince the three idiots to join their study group, and unexpectedly gives him the greatest present he's ever received, a girl's phone number, to help plan shit. But anyways, he passes the responsibility to Kyokyo -Kyo using her charm. She convinces the boys to show up to the study group the next day, but Suzune chases the boys away with her meanness, including Kyokyo, because -Kyo, frankly no one can stand to be around her. Later, Kiyotaka heads home, but over here Suzune talking to someone, but she seems scared. It's the president of the student council, and he's actually her brother, Manabu. He tells her that it was a mistake for her to come to this school, but she promises she'll be promoted to class 1A soon. Step bro, I mean, Manabu tries to pimp slap her, but Kyotaka jumps in to stop him, and she tells him to butt out, but Manabu is impressed with his skills. He congratulates her on making a friend, and warns her to fight like hell in this school or else, and walks away. She doesn't tell him Kiyotaka shit, and they move on like nothing ever happened. Kiyotaka then helps her come up with a plan to convince Redhead to join the study group, using his points to pay a senior student for last year's tests. He gives the classmates these valuable old tests two days before the exam, forcing them to not take his help lightly, and they all study like hell. And everybody actually passes their midterm exam, and everyone is happy, but Kyo Taka gives all the credit to Suzune, holding all his cards close to his chest, and confusing Suzune why he would do this. Miss Smoke Show is impressed by them all, but reveals something horrifying. The worst student in the class actually didn't pass, surprising, since the passing grade was 40 out of 100, but redhead guy only got a 39. Doing some quick math, she says the class average was 79.6, and split that into 2. 39.8 was the minimum passing grade, but add in the pesky decimal rounding. This makes the new minimum amount 40, and redhead guy just fell short of that, pissing everyone off. Kiyotaka knows Miss Smoke Show played dirty and goes to talk to her. He puts his money where his mouth is, and offers to sell her his points 100k to not fail redhead guy. Suzune then enters and offers to help pay as well. Pressed with their out-of-the-box thinking, Miss Smoke Show accepts, but warns them no one has ever been able to move up classes before, and they will likely fail, but they tell her to watch them. With redhead passed, their class barely makes it through the school's first exam, and they compare their class total of 87 points with class 1As of 1,004 points. Everyone realizes from here on out, they'll have to step up their game if they want to make it in this school. Suzune's study group holds a group party inside Kyotaka's room, kind of without his permission, but he rolls with it. After, Kikyo heads home but leaves her phone behind her, going to give it to her. He then hears her true crazy self whispering nasty things about her classmates to herself. His phone rings and he gets caught snooping, forcing him to confess that he heard everything. She warns him that if he ever tells anyone about her craziness, she will destroy his reputation in the worst way possible, grabbing his hand to her chest. She says his prints are now all over her, if you know what I mean, forcing him to keep her secret. Suddenly, she turns back into her cheerful anime self, making Kyotaka realize that this much hotness comes at a price. The next day, Kyotaka finds out from their teacher that their next batch of points has been delayed due to a system glitch, and they will all have to wait till it gets fixed. And that's when more trouble strikes Class 
1D. Someone from Class 1C has made a complaint against Redhead Guy for attacking them. Redhead Guy swears it was self-defense, but there's no proof or witnesses. Miss Smokeshow announces to the students that a hearing will take place in one week between their class and the ones who put in the complaint, Class 1C. The loser will get expelled. Susan A warns Kyotaka that they've barely passed and can't afford any deductions. Class leader Swamp Hair Guy asks everyone to find witnesses, but Susan A thinks Redhead Guy is a liability and doesn't help out, forcing Kyotaka and Kikyo to figure shit out. They meet up with someone from Class 1B that they recently made friends with, Konami, and she offers her and her class to help them fight against Class 1C. Collecting leads, Kyotaka finds out from Honami that they received an anonymous tip. They find out one of the three bullies who claim Redhead Guy attacked them is also a problematic student and a good fighter. They think it's strange that a team of two plus one good fighter would get defeated by one person, and thinks Class 1C is lying. Honami wants to give this mysterious person a tip for the tip, but doesn't know how. Kyotaka offers to help her on her, but notices she has a ton of class points and wonders how. Later, Suzune updates him that the anonymous tip came from someone in their class named Irie. She says she noticed earlier when Swampy asked the class if they wanted to save Redhead Guy, Irie was the only one who was looking down in a way, making her guilty as hell, obviously. They try calling her phone, but she doesn't pick up, realizing that they need more hard evidence because even if she confesses, it won't matter, because this case is more about self-defense. Redhead Guy as a person isn't liked by many, and unless they find concrete evidence he didn't do it, he will be found guilty, since his character sucks. With one day left until the trial begins, they rush to catch Irie in person, but she tries to make an excuse and leave, but drops her camera, crying. Being nice, these two help Irie get her camera fixed, heading to the shop. Here, the store worker asks her to fill out this form and put her phone number. She hesitates while he stares her down. Kyotaka then fills it in for her, relieving Irie and pissing off the shop worker. After Irie tells them, she will think about being their witness and leaves, but later, Kikyo updates Kyotaka. She's found dirt on Irie, naughty pics of her online as a famous upcoming model, and thinks this is why she doesn't want to be their witness and why she ran with her camera earlier, realizing even her glasses are fake, and she has a fake identity in this school. The next day, Redhead Guy's case begins, hosted by Suzune's brother and student council president, Manabu. They go over the incident and hear everyone's side of the story, but also look into Redhead Guy's character. He's violent, doesn't listen to rules, and is a total douchebag, and now Kiyotaka's group are in trouble. This situation is about to get fudged. In court, someone's character is a huge deal on how guilty or not guilty they can look. This means someone who looks like a good person on paper has a higher chance of being found not guilty over someone who looks like a bad person, even if the good person is guilty. This school is the most prestigious one in Japan, which means their bottom line is keeping their reputation and the image intact, including the students and how they reflect on this school. Knowing this, it's logical to assume that they would prefer to keep a good student who made a bad mistake once over a student with a bad history like Redhead Guy, since he has way more of a potential risk. Since there are way too many variables, I would work on what we have against Ken to prove that while he might be a little unstable, the school needs him. How I would do this is by character assassinating the other side. <laughs> Since there are too many variables, I would work on making Ken look great. By making the other side look way worse, these kids are anger-filled children with chips on their shoulders. Since everyone in this competitive school wouldn't be here if they weren't a little crazy or had something to prove, and picking on children's mental instability is my favorite thing to do in my spare time. As Class 1D, I would start poking these kids' emotional triggers by finding out dirt on them and making it seem way worse than it is, while telling Redhead Guy to remain calm and shut up and not to say a word, as this move could provoke these bullies enough to make them explode in anger. People tend to believe what they see, and even if Redhead Guy is a known problem student, if the court sees him in this moment looking calm while the other side loses their mind, this could be a way for us to take the attention away from Redhead Guy's character by highlighting how bad the other side is, and make our boy look more holy than the Pope at a dog rescue center. And then it would finish them off by highlighting Redhead Guy's value in terms of his athletic skills, and how much value he brings to the school in this way. This would be the most reliable method without relying on any witnesses which we don't have. The case for Redhead Guy goes on, but Kyotaka, Suzune spacing out again because of her brother's presence, and decides to deploy some tactical tickling skills to snap her out of it, violently awakening her conscious. With a little time left, Suzune comes to her senses and starts doing what she does best, being a big, fat, annoyingly smart, smarty pants, interrogating the suspects and figuring out holes in their defense. She specifies the incident happened in the sports hall where one of the boys had no reason to being there in the first place, and finds it hard to believe these three people got so badly beaten by one person and for no reason, and when one person in their group, Daki, also has fighting experience, and thinks they're lying. That redhead guy didn't beat them for no reason, but they all actually ganged up on him. Just then, Irie comes in to save the day and decided to help them. She tells the school that Class 1C beat him up for no reason, but Class 1C's teacher, this glasses guy, thinks Irie is lying to help the other side, and thinks Class 1D manipulated her since she's a sweet girl and doesn't know anything. But Irie finally grows a pair and reveals she has evidence that she was there when the fighting happened, 
taking out her SD card. They go through it, seeing her cheeky pics being taken on school property. She tells them she was out that day looking for spots to take naughty pics when she took this pic, in the background clearly showing the fight taking place. But class 1C teacher says this pic just shows fighting on both sides, not who started it. He offers a compromise to suspend redhead guy for two weeks while his boys get one week. Everyone is about to agree, but Suzune fights back harder and says her classmates didn't do anything wrong and claims students from 1C planned this all along, both sides erupting chaos. The class president tells everyone to meet again tomorrow, but must prove the other side is lying or confess to the crime, or he might just expel everyone. Kiyotaka comes up with a plan. Meanwhile, Iris suddenly gets tons of text by someone she knows, sending her more messages than usual, and this time they're nasty. Nervous, she tries to ignore them going to her mailbox, but finds dozens of photos of her inside and collapses in fear, knowing she will soon have to pay this stranger back because she owes him. The next day, Kiyotaka lures the class 1C bullies to where the incident took place, but Suzune surprises them by revealing that this building actually has cameras which they never noticed, not to telling them they secretly bought fake ass shit and temporarily installed them for show, but the bullies don't buy it and think if she had camera footage they wouldn't need to do anything to prove Redhead Guy's innocence. And this footage would technically also get Redhead in trouble since he was also fighting. Kyotaka calls their bluff and tells them the school hasn't brought this up because they're testing them to see if they can deal with it themselves because this is all a test. Their classmate might get in trouble, but the bullies will get expelled since they started the fight. The bullies get scared by this and Suzune finally convinces them to withdraw the case, making everything go away just like that, and saves Redhead Guy. All the while, Airi elsewhere senses her stalker following her and runs for her life. Kyotaka makes sure to let everyone know that Suzune was the one who came up with the plan once again. And just then he gets called by Irie, hearing her in despair, not realizing she's trapped with someone horrifying, the creep from the camera store. Grabbing Irie, he says he wants her. About to do things, he's suddenly blinded by a camera flash from Kiyotaka. He's arrived to save her and tells Mr. Creep that he now has him dead to rights and his life is now ruined, and found Irie through a phone tracker, just as Honami and the cops arrive in the back. It was clear this guy was up to something from the very beginning. You saw the way he was staring at her when they were filling out the form. If I was Kiyotaka, I would have been way more careful. We're hiding something diabolical because it's clear we're too cool for this place since we've never smiled once. If Kiyotaka wanted to place attention on others this whole show, he literally just did all of this for nothing with this one move. If we remember this school cares about its reputation, but a case like this would make headlines all over the country, it would be a huge deal. Especially the conspiracy with the girls' picks and how these two know each other. The media would have had a field day including a hero of the story that was caught on camera. Us. Making it harder this time for us to pin the hero award on someone else. Here's what I would have done better. The guy likely suffers from the most common type of psychological profile when it comes to this kind of thing, which is categorized as a premeditated attack designed to catch the victims off guard, meaning this guy's a professional planner and doesn't act on impulse, which means he likely already looked for areas that had less foot traffic and figured out his perfect hunting spot. Because this school is a top school, this means security here would be tight in areas susceptible for hosting suspicious activities like alleys and empty lots, not due to the student's safety, because who cares about them, but for the school's reputation, which comes from protecting the students. That's why in order to do the right thing, I would have either taken a pic then called for help and ran away, or I would have taken a pic of the situation with the flash on to stop the man, but would have stayed there with the camera held to my face to hide my identity. Seeing someone capture evidence of the crime in the middle of a crowded school would have likely scared this creep off, since we're already at a distance, and if he chased us, we could have just gone around the corner where there would have been hundreds of witnesses going about their day. With no moves left, the bad guy panicking would have retreated at least for now, and we would have had our evidence, which we then could have sent anonymously to the school without getting involved at all. Because helping this girl right now literally did nothing for us except to make us look badass as balls, which is the exact opposite of how we should have handled this. Mr. Creep gets arrested, but says he's her biggest fan and helped her get into the school because he works there. Meanwhile, Class 1D's homeroom teacher, Miss Smoke Show, calls to speak to Suzune. She asks who came up with the camera plan to beat Class 1C. Suzune takes the credit, but Miss Smoke Show doesn't think she's smart enough and thinks Kyotaka is actually behind this. She tells to learn as much as she can from Kyotaka as she can before it's too late, and wonders why this suspicious kid is hiding his potential. Elsewhere, Kiyotaka walks home, but runs into the student council president. He tells him he's impressed with how they handled the case, but he tells him his sister is the real hero. He ignores him and offers Kiyotaka to be his little bitch. <laughs> but Kiyotaka refuses and just wants to be a normal kid. Manabu then tells him to not let him down. He then runs into Suzune, and she's pissed. She says she knows into class 1A, but doesn't know what his deal is and why he's giving her credit for things. He tells her he'll help her achieve her goal, but to respect his privacy and not ask any more questions. A few months later, summer vacation rolls around and the school sends the students on a cruise ship vacation headed for an island. But Kiyotaka gets news from his teacher, Miss Smoke Show, that someone recently tried to have him expelled. Since he is a student, he is protected, but convinces him to make a deal with her. She will help him get to class 1A, but he must do what she says. And he reluctantly agrees, giving up some 
freedom in order to protect his freedom. Suzune then asks to meet him and confirms what he is thinking too. This cruise isn't for funsies and is a part of a test. Shocker. Kiyotaka thinks the island they are going to is a dorm that the school owns in the southern islands, which means they need to be on alert. And just then, this famous school bully, Kakeru, from Class C shows up and says he knows Suzune is the one who outsmarted his Class C, saying he's a fan and will play with her soon. This kid from Kakeru's class comes up and wants to talk to him about something, but gets manhandled by security guard Mr. Muscles as they leave. Kiyotaka tries to help, but she walks off angrily. The next day, they near the island, but all the students gather around and get told by the school they're about to have a special exam. For the next week, all of them will live on the island and must survive. Arriving, they find out the rules. They must survive here any way they can, but they can also use, use up reserve S points that could otherwise be used for future tests and count towards their class points. Things like illness, serious injury, being absent during the morning or evening roll calls, or using violence against other classes or robbing will cost them points. However, they will get points for every designated location they take over on the island. They must renew their location every eight hours, but only the class leader has the right to declare possession using a special card that they must keep on them at all times. They can change their class leader without a legitimate reason and also must try to hide the identity of their class leader. On the last day of the test, each class will get the chance to identify the leader of the other classes. They earn 50 points from each class they get correctly, but they will lose 50 points if they get it wrong. Suzune and Kyotaka realize they need to win this test if they want to have a chance to get ahead of being last and get closer into getting into 1A. Okay, this shit is just like Hunter x Hunter because at this point they should have expected that everything is a test, even their vacation. While doing the normal things that every survival article online tells us to do, there's actually something way more important that I would get to first because this is the one thing that could ruin everything. We have to start with the assumption that everything is a test designed to assess our leadership capabilities, like our adaptability for one. And this is why I would have everyone write down their top request that they want to spend our points on. But I would have them all do it anonymously and put their votes inside a container so we could do a blind vote. From there, I would tally the most popular requests and then announce once we set up a camp later, we would revisit the most popular request that we could possibly spend our points on at a later point. This will ensure that due to the science of groupthink and mystery, there will be less chance that anyone speaks out in order to not stand out, since no one knows who voted what, or they won't be able to know everyone's votes, since some people naturally will end up not wanting to reveal what they voted for in order to not risk getting caught. Right now, the only way we'll survive, let alone win, will be by working together. I would try to ensure calm and order in this group for as much time as we can, with set contingencies of most popular voted items to buy using our points only when the people start losing their cool. This way, from here on out, we can start focusing on achieving our objective of how to survive without worrying about if we should spend money on a bidet or something useless. All the classes start looking for a campsite. Kyotaka's class argues if they should use their points to buy luxury items like maybe a toilet stall. But class president Swampy grabs Kyotaka and Irie to help him look for campsite with some others. But he spots this one classmate named Osuke, aka Sex Symbol, rush ahead of them, forcing Kyotaka and Irie to separate from the main group to try and catch up with him. But they eventually lose him. But they come across this designated location to capture. But they wait and see if they are the only ones. I must be careful not to expose the identity of the class leader, which they don't even have yet. And just then, they spot someone come out from Class 1A, Kohei, bald guy, with someone else, and spots him holding the keycard, but can't see if it has his name on it or not. Suspecting he could be the leader of his class. Heading back, they update their class that they lost sex symbol just as their group finds a spot to set up camp, but they need to nominate a leader in order to claim the area. Suzune gets roped in because she doesn't stand out, and reluctantly agrees. They figure out a way to hide the leader while they claim the land and stand in a crowded circle over the device, claiming the site they set up camp, but then come across an injured person from Class C, Mio. They offer to help her, but decide to weigh out the risk with the group first, heading back to find them arguing about point spending, agreeing only to spend points on important things like nutritious meals and water, but will also go forage for land food to save points. Mio is then brought in by the group to be looked after, just as they find out that Sex Symbol reported that he felt sick and has returned to the boat, abandoning their classmates, and now they've lost 30 points because of it. The next day, Kyotaka and Suzune do some recon on their competition, heading to see their friend Tonami's Class 1B and see how efficient they are. They then go to Class 1C's camp, but see them living it up. Kakeru then speaks to them, telling them they don't care about points and want to live it up, spending all their points on the first day. Suzune asks him if he knows Mio, because they found her beat up last night. He says she's from their class, but he taught her a lesson because she was just not following orders, angering Suzune. The two leave, but Kyotaka thinks they don't plan on lasting the week and are doing what their classmate Sex Symbol did by claiming they're too ill or mentally unstable to continue, so they could head back to the boat and chill the rest of the summer because they don't need the points. A few days later, the group survives, but do another round of recon, finding out that Class C have left their old camp. They think Kakeru and his group gave up. They go ask Honami about their remaining competitor, Class A, Kohei. But she says the original leader of that class was Arisu, but she didn't take this test. And that's why Bald Guy was put in charge.
charge. She warns them that Bald Guy is smart and wouldn't drive a wedge in his group even if Arisu was absent. They find out later that Mio's class C has also likely left. The next morning, it gets weirder. One of the girl's panties has also gone missing, and she thinks one of the boys stole it. Class President Swampy is asked to find it since everyone trusts him, and they demand he search everyone's bags. Forcing the boys to line up to be checked, in the line, one of the guys finds the panties in his bag, but swears he didn't touch them and doesn't know how they ended up there. He panics. Kyotaka watches him, thinking he's not that stupid to incriminate himself. The guy then hands him the panties and wishes him luck, forcing him to deal with it, hiding it under his clothes. After, the thief isn't found, and the girls demand the boys get frisks, pissing them off. Swamp hair guy then checks them all, including Kyotaka, but doesn't say anything. After Kyotaka confesses to him what happened, but Swamp guy believes him. He offers to take the panties off of him, saying that if he gets caught, the girls won't hate him as much, but asks Kyotaka to find the real panty thief and to tell him first once he finds out. With no results, the girls demand to camp on one side and the boys on the other, allowing only Ogre to go in between the boys and the girls' sides from now on, but he ropes Kyotaka to help him as well. Later, Mio asks Kyotaka if he suspects her, since she is the outsider, but he lies and says he trusts her. But then he goes to find where they found Mio to look for clues, because something is going on. In the evening, Suzune updates Kyotaka that she doesn't trust Swamp Hair Guy, but he tells her to chill out because he knows she's been feeling sick since she arrived here, and he can tell she's getting worse. He forcefully checks her temperature and says she's burning up, and that's when they hear a storm headed their way. So the group goes to hunt for the last minute resources. Kyotaka asks Suzune where she keeps the keycard. She assures him it's on her at all times. Seeing the girl's bathroom backed up, she goes to the nearby lake to take a bath, and that was her biggest mistake. Ten minutes later, she approaches Kyotaka to tell him some bad news. Someone has just stolen her keycard. He tells her they should keep this quiet and find more clues first. Listing their suspects, Suzune thinks it's either this random character or Mio, and says she will ask Mio directly. Returning to the campsite, they see it's been set on fire by someone. Looking for Mio, she sees her shocked at the fire. Suzune thinks maybe she isn't guilty, and find their island manual has been burnt as well. The whole group erupts and suspects everyone is a traitor, creating chaos, and it starts to rain. Kikyo then comes to them, saying Mio has also now disappeared, making everyone think she is the traitor. They look to Shrek for directions, but he finally has a five-second mental breakdown. Kyotaka snaps him out of it, and he starts ordering. Osuzune rushes off to find Mio, and Kyotaka heads into the forest, but for other reasons. Suzune catches up to Mio, but she says they have no proof. Suzune suddenly starts to feel dizzy. Mio drops her bag for her to check, but also gets hit. Mio charges at her, and the two fight. She finally admits she stole the card and does some sneaky ninja moves to knock Suzune out. Escaping, Mio goes to the location where Class 1D found her, digging out a hidden phone. Hearing a sound nearby, she thinks someone is watching her, and then goes back to her mission, calling Bald Guy from Class 1A, saying that she has the keycard. A little later, Suzune wakes up being dragged to cover by Kyotaka. She updates him on the situation, but he tells her she should drop out since she's sick, and he can handle things, and she refuses, because they will lose points and wants to get into Class 1A so her brother will finally acknowledge her, but he tells her he'll help her, and she's not alone, as Kyotaka becomes the new leader. Later back at Class 1D camp, they discuss if Mio could be the leader of Class C, but Kyotaka updates them that their classmate sex symbol went undercover to find out the identity of their own class leader. The others worry tomorrow. The other classes will name their leader Suzune, causing them to lose a total of 110 points, plus the penalty they will receive for Suzune and sex symbol dropping out. Basically an all-around shit show. The next day at roll call, all the classes get rounded up. The teachers announce the test is over, just as Kake from class 1C shows back up, not missing from the island as everyone thought, shocking everyone. Each class then gets the chance to guess the other class's leaders, already having enough points and not needing any more. Class B opts to not guess any leader. Sex symbol is then revealed to have secretly made a pact with Bald Guy to transfer him 200 test points from class A in exchange for the ID of class B's leader, or a photo of it. Everyone realizes this is why class C quickly spent the remaining 100 points, and everybody except Osuke, Mio, and Satoru stayed on the island to figure out the names of the other class leaders. With the votes in, the teachers announce the winners. Class D miraculously wins with 225 points, followed by Class B, 140, Class A, 120, and Class C with zero, shocking everyone. All this happened. Everyone heads back to the ship confused, where the real 1A class leader, Harisu, reveals everything went according to her plan. Long story short, she made everyone mistrust Bald Guy now, so he would finally stop weakening her leverage over the class, thanks to her ally in Class 1A, who secretly outed their leader to Kakaru from Class 1C, who then double-crossed Bald Guy in working with them initially to help him find out the identities of the other leaders, but still no one knows how Class 1D managed to come in first place. Later, Kyotaka secretly explains to Suzune he intentionally led Mio to steal Suzune's card, and then had her withdraw so he could become the leader, making sure that Class C incorrectly guessed Suzune as the leader on the last day, and guessing the other leaders. He reveals that he knew Bald Guy was a smart person and would never be so careless, showing off his identity card in the beginning, especially since they never saw the name of the card, which means it was a setup, and the real leader was likely the other rando next to him that day. He also knew that Kakeru 
Kuro never dropped out since he's Class C's leader. Since he clocked his walkie-talkie that one time they spoke to him, the same one Mia was holding at the end. And not wanting to jeopardize Class D's alliance with 1B, he withheld naming their leader. And he just basically out for dimensional chest everyone. Elsewhere, Kiyotaka then goes to his teacher Miss Smokeshell and tells him good job winning. And reveals the man who tried to remove him from the school was his dad. But he says he will defy daddy and stand the school to achieve his goal, whatever it takes. Heading off, he runs into Suzune and she finds out once again that she got all the credit from him. Getting annoyed, she asks why. He doesn't tell her, obviously. And she finally admits their allies, but doesn't realize he doesn't think anyone in the school to be his ally and thinks all humans are just tools. Everything will be sacrificed to win, and winning is everything like a psycho. But what do you think about the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to check out our How to Be playlist.